So it turns out the parents may provide implicit correction, and the way they do this is by offering alternative language forms. When a child has said something incorrect, so in effect the parent's providing a good example of language use for children without explicitly correcting them. And this is called a recast. So we have an example of one here. The child says, the dog runned really fast, Daddy. And the parent's like, yeah, he ran really fast, didn't he? So you see here we have the incorrect form, and what the parent's doing is right after the child has said this, the parent recasts this incorrect form into what the good, correct form of the past tense of run is, which is ran, and uses the same words following it to really highlight for the child the correct way to say what the child intended to say, which is he ran really fast. And so uh, what we're not going to do right now is watch this video from Linkspace, which talks more about recasts, which you can watch on your own. Um, but it turns out that while this seems like a really great thing, this recast, parents don't provide recasts all the time or even all that consistently. So one study looking at interactions between two-year-olds and their mother showed that the mothers only made recasts after about 26.3% of incorrect sentences, and the rest of the time they didn't bother. So like, you only get the correction a quarter of the time, and the rest of the time it's like, eh, fine, right? You don't really know what you've done is wrong. And okay, so that's not great, but still like, you know, 26.3% is better than nothing. But here's the thing. Sometimes parents will repeat children's incorrect utterances if they agree with the meaning of these incorrect utterances, which would seem to reinforce the incorrect language usage. So for example, we have here, read a book. And the mother's like, all right, you read a book. And probably she's pretty tired at this point. But of course, what she probably should have said if she was actually speaking to another adult was read the book or read a book. You need, you need some little word in there, read, read books, some books. You need a word in between. You can't just say read book, certainly not to adult. So she basically reinforced this incorrect usage by, by repeating it, right? So just a recasting a repetition, uh, really just repetition, uh, is not necessarily a fail-safe signal, right, that you've done something right or that and not, and you know, you don't really get a lot of feedback if you've done something wrong at least uh, three quarters of the time. So still, fine. What happens when you do get them? Well, recasts can be very helpful when they offer a direct and immediate contrast, right? They happen right after the incorrect form was used. It's very fresh in your mind and you have this epiphany of, oh, that's how I'm supposed to say it, right? So the immediate contrast between the child's way of saying something and the correct way. So a study from 1998 by Saxton and colleagues found that children learned much more quickly when they were given recasts in an experimental uh, setup. So when you get that implicit correction information from recasts, it's a good thing, right? Um, and a recent study from 2016 said the percent found that the percentage of utterances that caretakers expanded and recast when their children were between the ages of 24 and 33 months, so like, you know, two to just under three, this was really, really impactful on children's vocabulary development. So recasts are great. It seems like when you get them, they can really help you speed up learning. But because of the inconsistency of their use, they probably aren't responsible for learning all knowledge about language. You just don't get them often enough or consistently enough for recasts to be the way that children learn.